Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I want to show you how to create repeating textures in Maya. Do you want to follow along in my tutorial? Well, you can. You just have to go to academicphoenixplus.com. Under Members Only, you will find the Haunted Hallway Maya file plus all the source images. This is going to be located in the Members Only academicphoenixplus.com. So right now I just have a basic plane and this is already UV mapped with its basic default UVs. I actually already downloaded textures for you. Right click, assign new material. We're going to go to the Arnold shader and select AI standard. I'm going to scroll up. Over here we're going to start with the diffuse. I'm going to click on the little checker which is the output. Go to file, click on the little folder, and then look for the texture that you want. Now I have a couple of textures here. These are already seamless. So the key is to find seamless textures. And I have this wood. I'm going to go ahead and click on open. Press the number 6 on my keyboard and there it is. Now to make this repeating, the key is to actually go to the placement node over here on the right. So you can see that it's in file and then here's the placement node. The placement node has a lot of attributes. The one you really want to play with is repeat UVs. So for example, if I want to triple this, I just type 3 by 3 and then you have a repeating texture. What's amazing about this is that because the texture is already seamless, you won't really notice a repeating texture. You can see a little bit of patterns that should have probably been painted out, but in general, if I am, for example, a character and I'm standing in this ground and I have debris everywhere, you're not really gonna notice a repeating texture. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bump map. So I'm gonna click on this, click on this little guy right here, collapse diffuse and open up bump mapping. I'm gonna go to file, the little folder, go to file, this is the bump value of 1. It looks like there's a connection already. You need to go there and click on the little folder and find your normal map. Now I already have a normal map selected, so I'm going to go ahead and click on open. You're going to see that the bump map is not really following what the color is doing. You can see that there is like uh, dents and scratches and everything like that, but unfortunately it's not really working. So what we need to do actually is go to the placement node of the texture and go ahead and repeat this one as well. And now that we did that, it's actually looking a lot better. You're going to notice that it's breaking apart the, the normal map. And the reason why, it's because I'm actually, Maya's default is a bump map, and we're using a normal map. So we got to tell Maya, hey, I really want to use a normal map. If you click on this little guy back down here, it's actually going to go through the, the nodes. And I'm looking for this one, which is the bump 2D node. As you can see over here, it says use as. Select it and change it to tangent space normals. It changes into the normal map, and now it's a lot better. If you change it to object space, it's a dramatic look that you probably don't want to go for. So let's go ahead and go back to tangent space. You may be thinking, you know, this is actually pretty complicated. What happens if I select my object and I lose my, my standard material and then I have to go through all these nodes? Well, that's why the hypershade was invented. Let's go to the hypershade. It's this little bluish ball with a white circle in it. Click on that. The hypershade is underutilized, but I personally love it. It's library of your materials. So for example, if I go to my AI standard, it's going to show you a sample and it's also going to show you the attributes of the, the shader. Over here, you can see the color. It's connected. Everything's kind of revealed. You can scroll down until you see the bump map. So it's it's exactly what we see on the other tab, except that now we have a whole library to play with. I'm going to right click on this, right click and hold, and then go to graph network. And what it's going to reveal is what it looks like a very complicated node tree. When you break it down, it's actually not too bad. Let's start over here. This is the AI standard. This is the one that we see over here, except that it's laid out in nodes. I can change my AI standard to wood texture or wood floor texture if I like, and you can see it changes the title up here as well. Now take a look at the attributes along here. You can see that there is color and it has a little connection and that connection is this texture. There's no alpha attached so you don't have to worry about any transparencies. If you keep going to the left you're gonna see the placement node and when I select these you can also see that I can change this. Let's take a look at go down and you can see there's a normal camera that's just your bump map. You're gonna go ahead and see the connection. There's a bump node 2D node, so if you ever need to change anything here, you can. It's attached to the normal map, and then it has its own placement node. Now, let's say the director is not happy with the map, and quickly you can change this. I can grab the wood 2D texture node, go over here to my repeating, and let's say change it to 4x4. Don't forget, you have to go over here and change this to 4x4 too. So, super fast. This is all just a, a nice visual way of seeing your textures. Now you may be wondering what this one is. This is more advanced stuff, so don't worry about it. You do need it, so leave it alone. If you guys watch my wireframe on shading, we actually play around with this. It's a little bit more advanced, so don't worry about it for now for this 
exercise, uh, just go ahead and play around with the notes. Now that we have that, let's see this in action. Over here I have what's called the Haunted Hallway. If I go to Panels, Perspective, Camera 1, this is actually a file that you can download when you look up 3D Render Lighting Challenge and you'll be able to find it. Let's say that I want to go ahead and add wood to this. There's two ways you can do this. I already have a wood shader so I can actually right click, go to Assign Existing Material and then choose the wood floor. All right, and you can see right away that the floor is automatically attached or you can go ahead and create a new material and start from scratch. So again, AI Standard, so on and so forth. Take a look at the wall here. Let's say that I want to put some sort of texture on this. I'm going to assign a new material, another Arnold. Click on the color, make sure you're under diffuse, that's important. Let's go to color, click on the little checker, go to file, click on this little folder, and uh, let's see what I have. I believe I have, I have an albedo.tiff, open that up, and it's huge. So I don't know about you, but I've never seen textures like that before. So I'm going to go to my placement node, change this to 5x5, five five, and maybe a little bit more. Let's make it dramatic, 10x10, 10 10, and it kind of changes things around. So I'm going to go back, go back again. I'm going to go to my bump map, click on this little checker, go to file, go to this bump value, go to this little folder, and I'm going to look for my normal map. I'm going to open that up, and whoa, it's all way over the top. So let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. I'm going to change this to tangent space normal because I am using a normal map. And right away you can see that I forgot something, right? And what did I forget? I didn't repeat this one. So hopefully I'll remember what it was because I actually don't remember the value. So again, this is where the hypershade is going to be really helpful for me because I, I have terrible short-term memory. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy right here, right-click, graph network. I'm going to look for my color. I kind of did this little switch, so no problem. I'm going to grab this. It's a 10, 10 by 10. Grab this, changes to 10 by 10. Let's see how that looked like. Much better. Um, all right, so I think the bump map is a little strong. So I'm going to go ahead and select my bump map and I'm going to actually decrease the intensity of it. So again, I can go to my hypershade, I can go to my placement node, and actually what I'm looking for is the bump 2D node. And I'm going to just kind of pull this down a little bit so you can see what I'm going to do. So when I select the bump 2D node, you're going to see that there is a bump depth. And the bump depth basically is at 100%, which is a 1. If I want to reduce it, I can change it to 0.5, for example. And you can see that the height has decreased. I can go even further and do 0.2. So it's really up to you how much you want to push it or how much you don't want to push it. So if I really want to go crazy, I can go like 3. And you can see that I'm starting to get some issues, or twice as much. Or if you want to, you can reverse it. You can do a negative 1, for example. And you can see that it actually reverses the normal. I'm going to go ahead and do a 0.3 just because I do want some of that. I'm going to still think the cracks are gigantic. So I'm going to go back to my to this and let's do 20. Let's do something dramatic. 20 by 20. I really just want it to be realistic. So right away we're getting a nice realistic texture. So you may be asking where did I find all these textures? Well, I have a little handy website and it's called textures.com. Textures.com has been around for years and professionals use this a great deal. You can sign up for free and you can download materials and textures. What's really great about this is that you can type in wall for example and it's going to give you like thousands of wall textures. And it also gives you these little shader balls and that's where I found mine. The one that I just used, I grabbed it from here. Provides you a substance uh, shader if you want to download it and if you know how to use substance. But uh, you can see here that it's got seamless. It's very, it makes it very easy to texture your objects really fast, especially if you're trying to uh, show a project and kind of sell a project really quickly. Furthermore, it comes with moss, it comes with bricks, uh, stone, whatever you want, you can basically find it here. And you might, they're not all repeating, so you got to be very careful, but you can take these items and manipulate them in a way that it can be repeating, or you just take them and overlay them and create your own unique texture. All right, so that's basically it. I hope that was helpful. That's a really fast tutorial on how to create repeating UVs or repeating textures in Maya. Hopefully that will help make your uh, texturing go faster. You let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let me know if this was interesting and if you want more. I'm always open to suggestions. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.